So you want to be a miner. This is how mining works on the Cornus blockchain. This video is presented to you by BurnCoin, the first mining pool on the Cornus blockchain, where you burn coin and earn coin. Simple. Let's start off by talking about what mining is not on the Cornus blockchain. It is not proof of stake mining. It is not proof of work mining. It is not a hardware specialized setup. You do not require ASICs or specialized GPUs. In fact, you can't even use those things. And lastly, it's not something you do in the short term. However, what mining is, it is proof of burn, it is a commitment, and it's something that's simple with mining pools, although you can run a solo node very quickly, and it's something that you do in the long term, which can be relative to your actual token holdings. As far as requirements go, you do require coin tokens in order to be getting mining on the Konos network. You require four virtual CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM, and up to one terabyte hard drive space. Although you can sacrifice a little bit of hard drive space at the current time because the size of the blockchain really isn't that large at the moment. You do have to have some command line knowledge in order to operate it, and you have to have either Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. In reality, mining can be done in five really simple steps. First, you acquire mainnet coin. Next, you burn coin to receive VHP tokens. The VHP token stands for virtual hash power. It's the only token that can actually be used to power mining. And once you have those tokens, you start and configure the mining node software. You register your mining node to the wallet containing VHP tokens. And what that basically means is that you have a mining node running and then you register the wallet that contains tokens that's separate from the block producer itself. And that way, if the block producer gets compromised, the tokens on a separate uh, wallet does not get impact. And lastly, you manage your mining node. In reality, there aren't that many steps. It's not too complicated to run a node. There are some advantages to solo mining and there are some distinct advantages to mining pools. And I'll show you exactly what I mean in the coming slides. So let's start off with the mining economics part one preface, some terminology, some baselike knowledge that you need to understand in order to move forward in this slide. There's a concept in Coinbase blockchain called virtual supply. The virtual supply is a total amount of coin and VHP in existence together. This number is important because it will impact exactly how much reward you get. At start, when mainnet first rolled out, the virtual supply was zero because there were no tokens on the blockchain. Every single token on the Coinbase blockchain either came from claims or it came from inflation due to mining. The total of the coin tokens that can come from claims is exactly 99,738,744.0258-7864. That number is exact because it equals to the number of tokens that were captured in the snapshot on October 31st. If you are not included in that snapshot, you cannot claim mainnet coin tokens. The only way that you can get mainnet tokens would be to buy it from someone else or to wait until there's a bridge or a centralized exchange that has mainnet coin. Lastly, coin is an inflationary token. The inflation is set at 2% per year and there is no maximum. And as a warning, if you're watching this video, please do not buy the ERC20 token with a smart contract ending in B9FC. That ERC20 token is completely abandoned and if there are new tokens from a bridge, it will have a different smart contract. Please do not buy any tokens from this specific smart contract. All right, so inflation is 2% of the virtual supply and we understand that the virtual supply can change. The 2% inflation itself, the value of 2% can also be changed by a super majority vote through governance. Inflation has a single purpose on Coinos. It is solely to reward miners with newly minted coin. The other thing important to note is that the reward scales with the virtual supply. So if the virtual supply increases, then the reward increases as well because it's 2% of the virtual supply. All right, let's take a look at a very simple example of these numbers. There's gonna be more complex examples later on this slide. So imagine we had a virtual supply of 100 million coin tokens. We have a steady inflation rate that's fixed at 2%, and we have an average block production per year of about 10,512,000. I'll show you how to calculate that in the next couple of slides, but the number is an average. Now let's assume that we have an ideal situation, and people tend to talk about this ideal situation being 50-50, meaning that 50% of the virtual supply has been burned and exists as VHP, which means that you have 50 million tokens. Now the reward pool, and I put pool in quotation marks because it's not a true pool. There's no token sitting somewhere waiting to be distributed. Instead, the tokens are created at that instance and distributed to the miner at that instance. What I'm really trying to convey is that if the virtual supply was 100 million, then at that specific time, the reward is calculated based on 2% of the virtual supply or 2 million. And when you do that math, you get the reward per block to be 0.19 coin. And how you got that number was that you take the reward pool, 2 million, and divide it by blocks per year, and you should get 0.19. Again, this specific example on the left side here is if you had a virtual supply of 100 million with 50% existing as VHP. 
Now on the right, we have a different situation. This was based on numbers that I took on Monday, November 14th. The virtual supply was 17.161 million. Inflation rate again, constant 2%. Blocks per year, again, on average, constant 10.512 million. But we had a situation where the VHP was about 44.78% of the virtual supply, which means we haven't hit that target 50% yet. Although 44% 44 is a really healthy number. Now in terms of tokens, 44.78% of the virtual supply represents about 8.58 million. And that's a total amount of VHP tokens out there. The reward pool, again, pool in quotes, is 343,229. And what that is, is 2% of 17.16 million. Now, if you wanna know what the reward per block is, you take that reward pool number and divide it by blocks per year, but you get 0.032. That means you get less rewards per block because the virtual supply is lower. Now let's get into the mechanics of mining. How do block producers actually produce blocks? Well, they're competing to produce blocks in a randomized process. Block production on proof of burn is completely random. There are no block leaders that are chosen or pre-selected to produce blocks. At the same time, they're also competing with one another and the mining difficulty via hashing. There is a small amount of hashing on proof of burn. It's not the same amount of hashing you get on proof of work where it's consuming a bunch of energy. It's very, very minimal, very light. I'm not going to get too deep into exactly how the hash works. I'm going to just give you the brief overview here, but there's something called the hashing difficulty. I'm not going to explain what hashing is in this particular video. I'm assuming that if you want to be a miner, you have some general understanding of what hashing is. But in short, on the Coinbase blockchain, you hash three specific things and you divide it by the VHP in your producing wallet to get a number. And that number must be lower than the difficulty level. So what are those three parameters? So you have the private key, the timestamp, and the output of the VRF. Each three of these things have unique properties to them. The private key, for example, is unique among any block producer. No two block producers have the same uh, private key. The timestamp is a global thing because everybody is working under the same presence of time. And then the output of the VRF is constant. It's the same VRF number that everyone is using for that particular instance that they're trying to hash. With these three hash parameters, you hash it and you get one value. You take that value and you divide it by the total amount of VHP in that block producer's wallet. So if you have more VHP, then you're likely to get a smaller number and that smaller value must be less than the hash difficulty. That means that the more VHP you have, the higher likelihood you are to produce blocks. Now lastly, it's not in this slide, but I'll share with you the idea of a time quantum. In Coinos, there is something called a quanta, which is defined as 10 milliseconds. Now in that 10 milliseconds, every single block producer is performing as many hashes as they can, and they do so by iterating the timestamp. Again, the private key is unique, so you can't change that. The VRF is global. Everyone's using the same global VRF in a particular quanta. And so the only thing you can do really to change your chances of writing a block is by either increasing the VHP you have in your producing wallet or iterating the timestamp which means more hashes. And so you may get a situation where there are multiple block producers who find that they have a hash value that's less than the difficulty, and then they all produce blocks. Now, what happens when you have multiple block producers is that there is a fork resolution process. And there's a whole process that describes how you decide which is the main chain. I'm not gonna get into that, but this is just generally the mechanics of how you produce blocks on the Corners blockchain. Now, for each block that's produced, several things happen. This is how I like to explain it, so you may hear it differently from other people. The concept's the same, it's just how it's explained. VHP is destroyed each time you produce a block. At the same time, it is returned to coin in a one-to-one -one ratio. That is why you always get back everything you burn. Simultaneously, coin is rewarded by minting and issuing to the block producer. That's the yield portion that you get for producing blocks. And when those two things happen, the virtual supply is adjusted. That means the VHP is reduced and coin is increased. Again, the VHP is reduced based on how much coin was originally burned and the coin is increased based on the conversion of VHP back into coin on a one-to-one -one basis, plus the yield you get from rewards. Lastly, the block difficulty is adjusted to maintain a three second average block time. Part four, yields. This is the part where everybody's wondering, what do you get for mining on Coinos? Mining rewards on Coinos are guaranteed. However, the time to earn reward is not guaranteed. It means that you can expect to earn a certain amount of reward for producing blocks. However, you do not get guaranteed how long it takes you to earn that reward in totality. 
I want to make a note, all rewards come from inflation and blocks produce. There are no other sources where someone can give you extra yield. Everything comes from inflation. Now, when the virtual supply operates at this 50-50 state, it's the ideal state where 50% of the virtual supply has been burned and exists as VHP. You should expect as a miner that it would take one year to convert all of the VHP back into coin. You should expect your APY to be 2% when you do not reburn tokens. Remember that block production converts your VHP back to coin and sends it back to you plus a yield. So if you don't reburn that one to one, then you will get a 2% with no reburning. Now, in contrast, if you do reburn and you keep your VHP level steady throughout the entire year, then you should expect your APY to be 4%. But that also means that your VHP will always stay as VHP and it won't ever go back to coin. All right, now I'm gonna give you some examples. Bear with me here. This is, it's basic math, but there are a lot of numbers at play. So let's take a look at how to calculate APY. Here we have the virtual supply is 100 million and we assume that there's an ideal state of 50-50, 50% coin and 50% VHP. The inflation reward is 2% of the virtual supply, which equates to 2 million coin, which goes directly to miners. And we have an average block time where we calculated it here. It's 365 days in a year times 24 hours in a day times 60 minutes in a hour times 60 seconds in a minute. And you divide it by a three second block time. You end up with 10,512,000 blocks per year. Let's assume that this person, a miner, burns coin to get VHP and he does 1 million coin burn. So he gets 1 million VHP direct one to one. Now, if you take 1 million and you compare that to the total supply of VHP, we get 2%, one over 50 or 1 million over 50. What that means is that you have 2% of the virtual hash power in existence. It also means by direct correlation that you also will on average statistically produce 2% of all blocks. So then you take 2%, you multiply it by the expect the average blocks per year. And you say that, well, as a miner in this current situation, if I burn 1 million coin for 1 million VHP, I should expect to be able to produce 212,240 blocks over one year. However, the key to this is that I have to maintain my VHP, VHP level is constant. I have to reburn and maintain 1 million VHP at all times. If I do that, I multiply the number of blocks I expect to produce, 210,240, multiply that by 0.19. That 0.19 is that value I got from this table right here, where I have the reward per block at 0.19025875. So if I do that multiplication, it turns out that I get 40,000 coin as a reward. Again, that million coin that you burn as VHP is still 1 million VHP in this specific situation, and you have to reburn and maintain that VHP to get this 4%. Now let's go to example number two. In example number two, we're using the live numbers from November 14th. We had 17,161,497 coin plus VHP as virtual supply. And in that instance, we had 55.22% existing as coin and 44.70% as VHP. So we, again, we did not have that perfect 50-50 split. In terms of numbers, that's about 9.476 million coin and about 7.68 million VHP. Again, inflation reward is 2% of the virtual supply, and that comes out to be 343,000. Uh, and we have the exact same constant blocks per year. Same situation, another person decides that he'll burn 1 million coin for 1 million VHP. But the difference is that he no longer represents 2% of the virtual hash power supply. He represents 13% because the total virtual supply is smaller. Now, again, you take 13% and you assume that, well, if I own 13% of all the VHP, I'm probably going to produce 13% of all the blocks in a year. We have that multiplication here and we expect this person to make, uh, to produce 1,366,560 blocks in a one year period. And you multiply that block number by 0.032, which is the expected reward that we calculated from the previous table. And we end up getting 44,619 coin, which represents 4.446%. That is the expected APY you would get if you were a solo miner and you maintain VHP levels at 1 million in this specific scenario. If you don't reburn, that number would get directly cut in half. As far as burn coin goes, again, this video is presented by burn coin, so we got to do some burn coin stuff here, right? For burn coin users, how do you get that APY we see on that screen on burncoin.com? 
Well, here we have 4.46% and we take a 5% operator fee of your reward. And so all you have to do is multiply that solo mining yield by 0.95 and you get 0.423. That turns just so happens to be the exact number that we got on the burn coin dashboard here. Say you burn 10,000 coin and get 10,000 VHP. If you're a solo miner, you would get 4.46% APY, earning you 446 tokens at the end of the year. And you would still have 10,000 VHP in mining. But if you join burn coin as a mining pool, that same 10,000 VHP gives you a 4.23% yield, yielding you 423 coin. And that difference is 5%. And that's what you would pay, which is the operator's fee that you pay to burn coin in order to run the mining node for you. Now we take 5% now, but as coin price increases, it's likely that we'll adjust that 5% to match the conditions. Uh, that's it for this video. I hope you learned how to become a miner and it gave you sufficient information and mathematics to determine if you want to participate in mining on Coinos. And if you do, uh, consider joining Burn Coin as the first mining pool on Coinos where you simply burn coin and earn coin. All right, thank you for watching and take care guys. Have fun.